Hey, hey, it's recording. You should think you come here to learn something. No, no, no. You come here to get experience on guitar. It's not that you learn how to play guitar, you learn something about guitar. So let's get started. So, this is my tuning. Standard tuning. E, A, D, G, B, and E. How does it work? You tune the guitar by doing... <laughs> now you tune the guitar by doing fifth fret against the next string, string open fret. So you tune the guitar by doing fifth fret against the next string open fret. So you see that I'm stepping on the fourth string. You count from bottom to top. Fourth string, fifth fret, and we count as metal part in front of my finger. One, two, three, four, five. Against the next string, which is the lower open string. There is a change when you come to the third string. You step on the third uh, fourth fret against the open string so and then again fifth so all right so tuning this is the standard tuning there is other kinds of tuning. You can mess up with it if you want. So you can do drop E tuning. up even more like say So now you have a D minor. If you tune to this sound, what could come next? Nope. Yep. So. You can just play around, do whatever you want.
just like this. So we are with uh, one string, the tune, whole step, another string, the tune, whole step, another string, the tune, whole step, and another string, the tune, whole step. So that's what you have. If you want to go to standard, you need to hit this one with the tuning. And then this one. Then this one. This one. You can always fine tune or try to find the frequencies by doing the harmonics. It will not be a perfect tuning, but it's easier to get to the most accurate tone and the most accurate uh, frequency on that string. So, on the seventh string of the fifth, sorry, on the fifth string, seventh fret, you hit this harmonic, doesn't matter if it is up or down, it's just an harmonic. Yeah, so against this one and then you fine tune it. So it's always fifth and seven on the, in this case, fifth string and fourth string. So fifth string, fifth fret, harmonic, fourth string, seventh fret, harmonic, should be the same. This string is a bit broken, so sorry for that. Then you have on the sixth string, seventh fret, harmonic, it's the second string open. And then on the fifth fret of the sixth string is the first and just for double checking later you can do fifth fret of the second string very high against the seventh fret of the first string so they clash a little bit all the time you can just push Pull the, the string so you can uh, remove this tension that is created on this nut here. Very good. Then you have the tuning done. So let's go to what? Let's do scales. What is a scale? The scale is like a key that goes into a door, and if it is correct into the mechanism it will open the door so let's do like this a minor this is a we have the fifth another a and then we have the third minor and back to a uh, fifth so you only have three different names of notes into an A minor. So now if you memorize this we have this note here So all this clashing with the key, which is A, you'll do other notes around it and it will clash again, these two frequencies, it creates some emotion. So when you clash uh, the third note of this sequence, when I count, I'll do one, two, three. So this is a minor. When I do this note to this string here, then I can apply the original one, which is our key, against to the third minor, and we have this sound, which is quite melancholic. If I would put this note half a, half a tone higher here, you have a major. 
So the thirds uh, are what defines the major and minor. So let's go continue with the minor scale. This is the second note, the third, the fourth, and the fourth is like, sounds like... I'm applying... together, so I'm doing... I'm applying the fourth note. Let's go back to the same key as A. When we did this, we went back to G major. So let's go back here to, to the A, A minor. So one, two, three, four, five. Five is the dominant. It's a very good frequency to clash against our key. So when we do this, we're doing tone and fifth, and we're doing what is called a power chord. Power chords are all over metal and pretty much all other kind of musics, rock and simple stuff. It sits very well with any kind because it's not defining the major or the minor or any other additional notes to this um, sound. It's very pure, very stable. same look is a note two forward on fret and one down on the string so you always have so what else uh, so one, two, three, four, five. When we go to the six, wants to be resolved usually down to the fifth. And it's like my friend of misery from Metallica. to the tone, fifth, another octave from the tone. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, very important note, because when you have a triad, you can add the seven. There is a, two kinds of sevens, let's say this way. You can have a seven that goes this way or a seven that creates more distress because it's so near to the frequency or multiples of the tone. So if we do the seven, we're doing things like nah, not to this one. Uh, let's see, things like this one. So I'm removing my finger from the octave of the tone. This is the tone. This is one octave higher. This is two octaves higher from this one. So this is the tone, which means um, this is an octave of the tone, which means that I'm counting eight from the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I do the octave, I counted eight notes. If I do the seventh, I just remove this pinky one. And I have the seventh just before we reach to the tone on the scale of A minor. And because we are on a minor, um, scale is this simple. Let's go back to an open 
seventh chord and then the C better. Like this is the A minor. And I do a seven by doing, I just removed the octave. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the seven is here. So I just need to do, um, Uh, so why was I saying that if it is minor it's easy to understand, if it is major it gets a bit complicated? It's just because of this principle. If I'm doing a minor, let's go to something like this. Minor scales have a relative for the major, which is this. It's exactly the same scale if I'm doing A minor. C major, you feel that it's almost the same thing. All right, so what's happening? I'm starting the, the scale of A minor here because this is an A. If I do the C major, I'm doing. What's what's happening here? I'm doing A, it's one, two, three. When I reach the third, which is the third is a minor for the A, I'm starting the C. This is a C, so I'm starting the same scale. So look at this. It's sharing the same notes. Okay, let's continue. Same notes. So if I play a melody, I'm not telling you if it is major or minor, so I could be playing along this. playing a major, let's do this C chord, uh -huh. so it's the same like, so it's the same scale, I'm playing along the key of A minor, which is all the white keys on a piano, you random do uh huh. With the white keys on the piano. And if you in, do the emphasis into the C major, or if you just play the C, it's a major. But I can be doing A. through modes and there is interesting things about modes as well. Um, so now we've seen pretty much everything of the scale. We didn't speak of the second because the second is tricky. You're just a little bit far away from the, the tone which can make it a little bit um, difficult to understand which tone is the real tone. <laughs> Okay, so the second usually you count it as the ninth uh, if you add it to a chord. Let's give an example to this one. If I do A minor and I count until eight, I have the octave, which is the same name of the note. All right, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Started with an A, ended with an A. If I do the next one, I'm counting nine. So this is when you do a C at nine, uh, A at nine. So A is the key. If I do a minor and I do a nine, 
sorry, I'm wrong, I'm here. Chords like this one. adding the ninth there is other chords like sus 2 and sus 4 uh, sorry um, let's see so the if I'm doing a suspended chord which means I have the third right I'm defining the third note if I add on top of it like this I'm raising the third to go forward really wants to be uh, resolved by going back to the third okay this is a a major song for this stuff is like this um... from Queen you're adding to the third major a fourth so you're doing a, a sus four if I'm not wrong on what I'm saying <laughs> but adding a fourth creates this tension and wants to be resolved back to the normal chord which is the major with a third major there there is another one that is from the A major for example like this open chord which you go back instead of having the third major you do the second note and you do this note here all right so this note here for an A it's a B so this is the tone of the chord uh, A this is a B so you don't want to add this second one here you want to uh, add it higher on this one so and you need to remove the third at the same time so the chord stays like this is a major and you remove the third so you get an a sus 2 suspended because you don't have the third let's add the fourth to add here seventh uh, we can go back to something new bossa nova let's have a sip of coffee mm -hmm. so let's speak about these sounds Guitar picks are amazing. Bought it in Liverpool from Beatles, it's a collection, very nice. So, you have the G, which is the tone, you have the seventh there, it's a G major with the seventh, one, two, three, 
one, four, five, six, seven. Then you have this note here, which is a B, which is the third major. One, two, three. Why is major and not minor? Because the major comes with a tone for the second and a tone for the third. If it would be minor, it would be a tone for the second and a half tone for the third. All right? It's that easy. To go octaves from strings to strings, you go from here to this one. You're adding two and two strings across. All right? So back to the same thing. We have the seventh, the third, and this one is this one, which is a fifth. Remember the power chord? But one octave above. Okay. Can be... You can find the fretboard uh, by memorizing some shortcuts. And shortcuts are is octaves, you add two and two, you have an octave. Fifths, you have two and one, you have fifths. Right? And then you have uh, things like this. If you have this one, you have... Ah, <laughs> you have this one, it's like the G. Alright? Or if you have this one, you have that one, it's like a C chord. Have here and here, the same C. D and D, D and D, D and D. Here's different. You have three forward and two across on the strings. Alright, so back to the bossa nova. We have tone one. Seventh, you have the third major, and you have the fifth. So, bossa nova chords are always covered with sevenths pretty much all over the place. So, when you do this sound, which you have the tone, the third, and the fifth, if you add a seventh, where am I? This one, then uh, you have a bossa nova chord very pleasurable. Then if you know the progressions, you can play around with some chords. The most easy connection between them would be this one, if you do on the 3rd fret of this finger, and you move to the 8th fret, some cool progressions like descending it's like chromatic what I'm doing here so chromatic what is chromatic if I'm on eighth So if you do a, a chromatic ascending, starting here, so why am I using four fingers to do the chromatic? Is because of the tuning of the guitar. When I do fifth, I'm doing the open chord, so I don't need to do this fifth fret. I just need to do the fourth and transition to the next string. Makes sense. So if I do. happens on the third string we tune it with the fourth so I don't need to do the fourth I just play three next string and then again the same as before four 
So what happens next? We continue. And next, we continue. So all connected is... And you can, con can continue if you want. Depending how many trusts, frets, trust is in Portuguese, uh, frets you have, you can have more or less. So electrical guitar you can have 24, 22 or maybe 17 on these kind of guitars. Here I have what? I have 12, 15, 17, 19, 20. I have 20 on this one. So on um, Spanish kind of guitar, which is not this one, uh, the ones with an island strings, usually the body gets into touch on the 12th fret. Here I have the body coming into touch with the 14th fret, so it's different style of guitars. All right. What else to know? We covered harmonics, uh, we covered some chords. So a chord, a triad is a, a tone with a third and a fifth. So it's like a valsa. Is it? Something like that, right? So this is a minor, the third major. Uh huh. And you can apply it to any part. It's like an elevator arriving to destination, it makes you arrive to your destination. <laughs> right. So technique. Let's speak about slides. You can apply a slide that goes from 5th fret to ninth fret with only one pluck. This is a vibrato, so let's only speak about the slide. You can do arriving to the ninth and playing the ninth, so You can do the descending of this or playing two times. I cannot do this without doing the vibrato. So what is a vibrato or vibrato depending where you're in the world? So it's, it's this motion, moving the finger. Like the singers when they sing, they're not just flat dead pitch like or whatever, I don't sing, uh, but they do some motion natural from the vocal cords. So when the guitar would sound more human, if we do some vibrato like this. So you can do horizontal vibrato, which is back and forth motion. Or you can do a bending vibrato, which is I'm physically moving the string up and down. Steve Vai has a double kind of vibrato, which is both at the same time, which he calls circular vibrato, which is a bit tricky to do. You need to practice. Um, you can do double slides. Double stops. Um, there is the bending technique, which is you pluck a string and then you raise it to the next frequency that you want. So if I'm starting here, I want to do one octave. Oh, one octave, I'll break the strings, but one tone. I need to finish two frets above, right? So. You need to practice and this uh, guitar is more difficult than an electric because the strings have a, a higher tension. So you have the bend up. You can have a pre-bend, which is you go to the note that you want and you unbend. <laughs> this is the slide version of it. Uh, 
A funny example would be this one. All right. And let's continue with the amarons. This is really quite of a stretch. You need to bend your hand like this, so let's do the easier one like this. This is the hammer on with a vibrato and a pull off. I'm pulling the string off. And if you connect the hammer on with the pull off, like this. You can do legato then if you do this kind of stuff and legato would be thing, things like I'm doing only one Which makes you play faster if you play correctly, not like me. So what was this part here? It's called a rake. This is a, a down motion, usually about three, that you silence them immediately by raising the fingers. You can mute it as well. very fast so it was I'm doing what is called a pentatonic scale which is on A this is the tone one two three four five notes per octave means that this five is penta is five uh, notes per octave pentatonic extra note which is the blue note and it's used in blues and it adds some emotion some difference instead of going which is very uh, missing something I can do Then you can fry the blue note in octaves as well. can do as well the next one which is a uh, seven to this other one So 
what we have here. It's a little bit of Metallica. What we have here is a A minor scale. And we're on pull off with a slide here. So this is only a scale. In uh, A minor. But we are using on the bass. So if you this if this is a A my minor with this note here, with this is the third third minor. If I remove it, we have with a sus2, right? So we have If we had these two doing two notes, two notes. What I'm doing is always making a bass note while the other is varying. Two together is with a slide in the end. Double stops. Oops. So here you're finding slides, bends, vibrato, hammer-ons, pull-off. Um, so all the ingredients to make a nice cake in music. When you cannot go up here to do the bends, you can do. You can go one octave down and you still stay on the comfort zone, not here, or if you're missing some frets, even worse, right? to know? That's a question. Um, hmm. What could be nice to know? Could be nice to learn some harmonics a little bit better. Harmonics just divides the string into vibrating into sections. If I have a string vibrating in this way, you see that it's vibrating a lot in the middle. So if I silence this part, this will be a null area of the string vibration which makes the string to raise the frequency uh, twice. So instead of having this frequency, you have it one octave higher. If I make it to vibrate not along to these nodes here and along to these nodes here, this, 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 this and this, I can create harmonics here or here or here, right? And I'm multiplying by four. So this is four times the frequency of this one. This is two times the frequency of the previous one. And I can make it instead of doubling it or four times, I can triple it as well. Then I dividing this string in three areas. Where is it? 
here, here, is vibrating on these nodes here, tuck and tuck. So three times the frequency. Alright. So I am missing some subjects now, what should I be teaching? Alright, so diatonic scales. Diatonic scales are scales with seven. Notes per octave. Alright, one thing to cover is fretboard. I'm doing boxed areas like always on this box here if you count this area to box I can do this one kind of box the minor then there is other scales this is the based on the on the major scale uh, which is this one the mode of this major is called the union it's the same scale just another name the minor mode uh, that we know as minor mode is the aeolian on this scale which is it's another way of saying minor this aeolian is the correct name but then you have other modes like phrygian So Phrygian, uh, Lydian, things like... Things like Jurassic Park theme is Lydian and a lot of sounds in cinematic creations uh, it's leading as well it's very beautiful to create some ethereal suspense emotional uh, feelings to what people might be watching like flowers growing I call the Lydian a uh, more major scale than the major. And the way to see this is if I start on Lydian. Always comparing to the tone, okay? When you do modes. There was one wrong note, right? Wrong notes catch attention when you're creating something. Uh, the listener might notice like, what the heck happened? I'm not expecting this kind of sound. So catching notes might sound like wrong notes, but you might be applying modes at the same time. So 
just use them as well. Lydian, it's like a cycle, doesn't want to finish because... Nothing is resolving and there is coming to a, a settle because only the tone kind of. So it's an ongoing move. It's like watching spring and the gardens uh, coming with the flowers very slowly, right? So this is more major than a major. Why do I say this? Because if you change one note to instead of this, this one. It's a little bit more minor than the previous scale, right? Even though it's a big, happy sound. If you change another note from the major, which I will call from now on Ionian, you have Lydian, then you have Ionian. Did you see the difference? If I change one more, I change from Lydian. To Dorian, sorry, I'm mistaken. Uh, a little bit minor from the major is, uh, which is the onion, is uh, the mixolydian. I am so sorry for that. Mixolydian. This is a pedal note that shows which key we are on, okay? Some uh, super trump songs are based on this scale. Some might be as well from Beatles uh, in the Mixolydian. So Mixolydian is a little bit more closed. You cannot see dark because it's still a quite open sound. Then the baby song, which is the major. Any babies uh, will like to hear these kind of sounds. Diverging from this mood. So, what I did, I started with two, 